thousand addicted gamblers in the UK. On average, for every one addicted gambler, a further eight people are somewhat directly affected by the problem. Children, lovers, fathers and mothers, brothers, sisters, friends and employers, colleagues, strangers, landlords and bills. In some cases, some will rob people and tills. He wants all his time back and love in his days. He wishes it would never have been this way. claiming that it's everyone out there having a good time drinking and laughing and, and that's what it's all about and um, in reality it's totally different and it's so secretive and you, when you're in there all day every day and you see all the people coming in out I was in William Hill and I was I heard the the staff in there talking about a guy who worked on the trains and all the money he'd collected for the fares for the people He'd gone onto the fixed odd betting terminals and played roulette and lost all the money that he was supposed to give back to the train company. A lot of young people are getting involved in this. This is such a destructive business. The new gaming act, which caused a furore over super casinos, also allowed bookies to set up almost anywhere they want. Previously, they had to prove there was a demand in an area. Now they just have to ensure they're not a risk to vulnerable people and children. So what are the odds of a new betting shop opening up close to you? Well, they are shortening. Firms like this are aggressively expanding right across the UK. They say they're filling a local need, but local councils say they're not wanted and they're not needed, but there's little they can do to stop them. Well, we cannot turn around to an applicant and say, look, there are already far too many betting shops in a particular area, you can't come in. And without that power, there will be a huge accumulation in certain areas, and probably those areas where it will do most damage to the social fabric. One worrying consequence is the growth of lucrative fixed odds betting machines. Unlike traditional slots, players know the odds they face, like in roulette. Just four machines are allowed per premises, but the greater concentration of shops means more machines, which critics have dubbed the crack cocaine of gambling. Now the government has asked the Gaming Commission to look at their impact. Obviously I've won a few quid on them, but the money that I've won, I would imagine that I've actually put back in now. Well, what sort of figures are we talking about? Well, I mean, anything sort of like from £1,000 upwards, really. But, I mean, I've spoke to people that have put, you know, £20,000, £30,000 in them. Bookmakers say they stick to strict social responsibility guidelines, and new shops are good for local communities. We bring significant investment, jobs. Uh, we uh, can brighten up a parade. And actually, the betting shop is one of the, the few places left now where folk can come together. They can commiserate when they uh, have a loss and celebrate together when they have a win. It's not uncommon to see people punching the machines, spitting the machines and throwing down their tickets and putting their hands on their head and going, no, I've lost it all. And that is happening every day in these places all over the country in pretty much every town in the country. 
The gambling industry claims that it's only a minute problem. I'll show you in this following clip. Does this look like a minute problem? Does this look like a minute problem? I'll give you a ticket for 26 pounds. So give him a 25 pound. Oh, Let me leave my money. Listen, I'll leave my money. You give him ticket. Leave my money. Give him any ticket. Right, just leave my money. Please. No, 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 give him my money. Back. I better leave that money. Give him my money. Give him my money. Give him my money. Give him my money. Yes, he's my dead car. Listen, yes, he's my money. Stop. Never take my blood car. Fight. Fight. Never take my blood car. Money. Stop. The betting shop is one of the, the few places left now where folk can come together. I had to say to my friends, I couldn't socialise basically, I had to say to my friends that I've got to go, I'm freaking out, I was getting aggressive all the time, my confidence was just really low, I felt like I had no hope, I'm still gambling, and um, what I found out was, it was the first time I'd heard about dopamine, I found out that what happens is, is through dopamine, is that when you have that first big win, it chemically implants into your mind that that is um, a mechanism for your survival because dopamine's released when you eat and when you have sex and it's basically a pleasure reward system in the brain. Um, yeah, I found out that basically everyone who's ever had a big win in gambling has been mind controlled to some degree. Um, has, has had someone else's version of reality implanted into the brain. So you can't really just go blaming people for being addicted to gambling. Um, when you realise what the addiction actually is, and if you look at a roulette addiction, what is happening to a lot of young people now, and has happened to myself, um, even the media saying it, and people who are clued up saying it, that there's no difference between the addiction to um, the fixed odds betting terminal machines than there is to cocaine, and that's on a chemical level. Dopamine is not about pleasure, it's about the anticipation of pleasure. It's about the pursuit of happiness rather than happiness itself. And what's most remarkable is experimentally, if you block that rise of dopamine from occurring, you don't get the work, you don't get the behavior. This is not only the anticipation, but this is what is capable of eliciting goal-directed behavior. Amazing elaboration on this, which now begins to tell us something real familiar. Okay, so in this study, elaboration, rather than this design, you press the lever the right number of times, you get reward. Do the work, you get a reward 100% of the time, that's how it works. Now instead, shift to where you get the reward only 50% of the time. You do the work, and only about half the time, you get the reward. So what happens to dopamine levels there this is what they do. They go through the roof. Because what have you just done? You've introduced the word maybe into the equation. And maybe is addictive like nothing else out there. What we see here is dopamine comes pouring out like mad. It's the uncertainty of the reward. It's called variable reinforcement, which is just another form of learning, where they purposely make the slot machines pay out a per certain percentage of the time. So you don't know how often, when that next payoff is going to come. The more they can teach you or you can learn that you cannot 
uh, predicts a pattern of when you're going to win or or know when to pull out and, and take your money, the better for them. So you're going to stay there and stay on until, until some point where you have to leave because you've been taught that if you just hang in there, you, that slot machine, that card game will eventually pay off. Put your